Just when you thought last week's episode required you to put on headphones and uh, potentially lock your door, this episode kind of takes it a step further. We legitimately have such a awkward scene that there's really no other way to describe it but what it actually visually is. There is no beating around the bush. There is no saying that it could be a misunderstanding. It's very clear what happened within this episode with Seiya and Valkyrie was definitely something that probably did happen. Now, once again, I know misunderstandings can happen, but it's just like, for that entire imagery that I cannot show on the screen, it's very apparent that there was definitely something going on there. I'm very curious on how the light novel version of this scene was, because obviously anime need to, uh, censor things that's usually how it goes but uh yeah i just i hope that anyone that was watching this episode had headphones on and locked their door if there's anyone in their you know living quarters because yeah it definitely required that i mean we all know anime can be weird but man this is this is something but okay enough with that though let's uh like let's get into some of the spice so uh there was a lot, like, I mean, a lot of spicy fan service throughout this entire episode of Cautious Hero. Now, personally, too much fan service can upset me. And the reason why I say that is because the only time I hate fan service is if it uh, distracts and takes away from the story, the plot, and progression. If it slows down things. But, in all honesty, this week's episode of, you know, Cautious Hero... The fan service didn't really slow down the plot and the story, etc. It was mainly just there in mid-conversation, which is there to kind of keep uh, certain individuals that were trying to survive November, you know, they can now do whatever they want in December. It kind of was there probably for them as a personal gift. But all jokes aside, though, it, this this episode definitely had a lot of fan service. And Valkyrie, whoa, just... The way she was coming on to Rista, but also what was going on with, you know, Aryusha, Seiya, it's uh, definitely something that's just like, whoa. Like, you, you don't expect it. I, I could definitely see a lot of certain artists drawing a lot of pictures from this episode of Cautious Hero. I definitely sense it, because it definitely had those scenes that could uh, inspire certain select individuals. But... All jokes aside, I know I keep saying that, but seriously, this time, jokes aside, this episode had a lot of kind of scary moments, honestly. Number one, going to the beginning of the episode, we continue off where last week's episode ended, where we met an individual that summoned a creature that was able to destroy this legendary armor that was basically meant to take down the Demon King. And with its destruction, it basically means that Seiya no longer has a sword that can defeat the Demon King and no longer, you know, armor that can also survive attacks from the Demon King. So with this entire event going on, it makes Seiya in a very bad situation. And the dude goes even further by sacrificing himself and everything just to be able to summon a creature that can defeat Seiya. And I would like to remind everybody that the creature that this man summoned was a creature that isn't necessarily the final boss. For instance, isn't quote-unquote the Demon King, not the final enemy of this story. And so when you really think about the difficulty of bringing down such a creature within this episode, it's kind of scary. In all honesty, it's really scary, because think about this. That creature was able to travel into the goddess realm, or the god's realm, and fight all the gods, pretty much, that we've seen thus far, and defeat them until eventually he got stopped by Valkyrie. And Valkyrie technically had to go into her ultimate god form just to be able to bring down said foe. So, it really just says a lot about how ridiculous an S-rank world is and how difficult it is to bring them down, and this isn't even the Demon King. It really does make me wonder, though, how Say could possibly beat the Demon King at this point, especially since he no longer has the weapon to bring the Demon King down, the armor to tank the Demon King, and the best of the best, apparently, of the entire God's Realm had to take down, basically, a summon. And if it took that much to bring down a summon, I can't imagine what the Demon King is capable of and just how much sacrifice and effort it's going to be to take something like that down. Which, the more and more as time continues to progress, it seems like Seiya 
is not having enough time to really prepare for the situation. That's something I do want to point out. Is that in this episode, there was clear indication that Seiya is not perfectly prepared. He's not ready perfectly. Because you even see Rista mention that she didn't notice at first, but she realizes that Seiya didn't say his common catchphrase when they enter through the portal to go back to the S-rank world. Which meant that Seiya knows that he's probably not ready. He's not ready, he has a lot of doubts, he's scared for the future, and I feel like we're going to get a lot of character development characterization for Seiya in these upcoming episodes, especially with everything that's been happening, because for him not to say he's perfectly ready, it must mean that something's going to happen that's really going to put him in a situation that's going to break him down as a character, and I'm excited honestly for it. I know that's kind of messed up and uh, sadistic to say, but I am excited to see Seiya in a position to where he isn't ready, and there is no no escape. I would love to see him really forced and pressed to do things to where he is not ready. It would allow us to see his character in a different light because even though he's always cautious, there will be those times to where his cautiousness isn't enough. And it seems like we're about to get to that point. And it's definitely something that the series has been gearing up for and building up to very slowly since the very beginning. Because as I mentioned quite a few times, every enemy Seiya faces, basically if he didn't put all the effort and time into really readying himself, Himself, he wouldn't have defeated any of his opponents. For instance, the Dragon Queen a few episodes back, if he didn't go through all that training, he wouldn't have been able to defeat that Dragon Queen. It really says a lot, though, how much he's having to prepare just to fight these opponents, and the Demon King is probably unfathomable in terms of power. I, I cannot imagine how strong that man is in comparison to Seiya, and Seiya is ridiculous as is. So I am liking the tension and the stakes that is being built up throughout the story. It definitely adds more weight, honestly, because from the very beginning, it seems like Seiya has just had a steamroll. Even though he's had some issues here and there, overall it's been most mostly a steamroll. He hasn't really had problems, but it seems like he might encounter his first main issues going forward within the story, which, like I said, is very exciting. So, um, let's get into Seiya and what he could potentially do in these upcoming episodes since technically there is no time to waste now and he doesn't really have much time now to really train what's gonna happen well we come to find out that the old man that wiped out one of the heavenly kings at the end of this episode he has a curse or affliction to where he basically turns into an old man or slash baby now we don't really know exactly how this works I don't really know how it works and I don't know necessarily if it can be fixed but whatever the case may be it is definitely funny but I feel like it can lead to a situation to where it can be very dire and honestly, before we got to see the weakness or curse to the dude, I was under the impression that maybe the guy was, let's say, a demon king or something, or a demon. I, I thought something like that was going to happen. It didn't happen, obviously, but uh, I was under the impression something like that could happen for the reason why he was so strong. But um, with great power, obviously, the man, you know, has a great weakness, and that is the fact that he turns into a baby, which means that he really can't defend himself. So he is kind of a liability. He may be able to do great devastation, but if you turns into a kid, you can't really count on it, count on him when the going gets tough. So, it seems like for the upcoming fights, Seiya cannot really rely on the old man. The question is, can the old man be fixed? Can his cure be fixed? Will, you know, Rista be able to heal him or fix it? There's a lot of questions I have, but we will see as the story progresses. But for now, though, the main point I want to get into, though, is that Seiya and his training, what did he accomplish within this chapter, despite all the spicy content we got. Well, we saw Valkyrie demonstrate an ability that honestly was basically reminiscent of what Naofumi did in The Rising of the Shield Hero. If you watched The Rising of the Shield Hero this past year, then you know what I'm talking about. He used like an Iron Maiden, used his iconic like fist-like grab, like closing his fist, and he destroyed his opponent. And as I talked about when I did my Rising of the Shield Hero review, I'm a big sucker for characters that have like a, uh, like a power ultimate or whatever, and when they close their fist to do something, I just, I love it. it you could call it cliche, whatever, but I am a sucker for those type of moves. I really love stuff like that. And seeing how Malfumi did that in the Rising of the Shield Hero, I was a big fan of, you know, what he did with his Iron Maiden. And seeing this episode, it did remind me of that. I, it really did remind me of, you know, what Naofumi did, and, and seeing what Valkyrie did reminded me of that. And I do wonder if 
you know, Valkyrie did truly teach Saiya that move. Will Saiya be able to use that? And if he is able to use that, what is the repercussions? Because from what we can clearly see is, is that if you use that ability, it causes you to have exponential blood loss. And that basically can mean lights out, especially for a mortal like Saya. Even if he is able to heal himself or whatever, it still lights out if he uses that. And since he says he's not perfectly ready, there is a likely possibility that he might use that and it might not be enough, which could potentially weaken him and he could die. And as we've already heard since the very beginning of the story, is that Saya knows when he dies, even if he's able to resurrect and go into back to his old world, it doesn't necessarily mean that the everybody in the world is fine, that he's leaving. They will all be sentenced to death, so he cannot afford to die. However, I could definitely see Saya for a last-ditch effort if he is going to fail to use everything at his disposal, especially something like that, to be able to defeat someone like the Demon King, but will it be enough? I really doubt it, because at this point, after everything we've seen, to use something as such a magnitude like that to bring down, let's say, a summoning, I highly doubt that I'll be able to stop something like the Demon King. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts of this week's episode of Cautious Hero. Let me know your honest thoughts. How did you feel about this week's episode? Did you, uh, enjoy it? Did you hate it? Be honest. I'm very curious. And, um, let me know your thoughts on how you felt about Saya not being ready about, you know, the whole situation. Do you think this is ominous and leading up to something very drastic that's going to happen this upcoming episode be honest in the comments below and with that i love you guys be safe stay healthy if you join my content you know please subscribe if you like this video please leave a like and if you want to get notified for whenever i upload a video please click the bell icon down below because for some reason even if you click the subscribe button you don't always get notified so if you want to get notified hit that bell icon and with that chibi out